Hello YouTube, I'm Andrew Does Hair. I work at the Young American Salon in Tustin, California, and you can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. This is my client, Lauren. I've been cutting his hair for almost 20 years now, and he's had roughly the same style the whole time. Lauren owns a company that does like luxury landscaping and backyard design. He's essentially a, a fancy construction worker is what I like to joke. So Lauren's style, you know, he's, he's outside working. He doesn't like to have a polished, tidy haircut. Um, we've never really given this guy a lineup or a fade. Um, I actually didn't do his last haircut. What you're looking at here is kind of remnants of somebody else going through and doing something. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just not what I would do. So what we're going to do today is keep Lauren somewhat messy. Uh, we want him to be able to show up to quote the job and look, you know, somewhat stylish even though he just left another job, you know, getting his hands dirty and hair dirty. We need his look to work and, and just look nice, maybe not tidy nice, but but uh, he needs to look cool even when he's lifting concrete, lifting sacks of concrete or whatever. And so what we're going to do to do this is we're going to just add a lot of structure. And I'm going to do this, you know, somewhat conventionally in, in a lot of ways. I'm going to start off with a center strip down the middle of the head. And I'm going to essentially confine his hair into a neat little box shaped like I want the haircut to ultimately be shaped like. And what I mean is like when his hair sticks out, I don't want it to stick out further than I want it to stick out. I want to kind of just compress everything down into a clean, tidy shape, even if it does have a rough, jagged finish. Now, you'll notice that as I'm going through and cutting the top and checking my guide here at this point, everything I'm cutting, I'm either going to point cut or punch cut or slide cut. I'm, I'm not going to put any blunt lines on the top of his hair here. And the reason for that is it just moves a lot more if we texturize it this way. And so I want to see lots of movement. I want to see everything broken up. I don't want him to, to be able to comb his hair in any direction and see a blunt line. I want everything to stay somewhat jagged, but I still want it to be very structured. And so I'm keeping my fingers parallel to the floor. I'm cutting everything square and, um, you know, we're leaving a little bit of height in the front there so that we can keep some extra movement going on around the front and keep things a little bit more tidy around the back. I think whoever actually cut his hair before me left the crown area a little bit shorter than I would have liked to, but we kind of worked with it here. I sort of connected the front to what was done in the back already. And as I get to the crown here, I don't think there's much, if anything, to cut because um, maybe after this section, it, it kind of was already pretty short. So now that I've got the top of the haircut handled and I know that it's shaped properly and it's texturized, I'm kind of just going to part the top out of the way just so I don't have to be combing it around and moving it around as I'm working with the sides here. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a section of hair straight at the bottom here, like all the way at the bottom, parallel to the floor, and I'm going to cut it to just long enough to bend and move back. And that's going to work as my kind of perimeter here. What I want to do next is check and see how long the rest of his hair is. And that, that longest piece on top happens to just reach that hair on the bottom. Now, traditionally, we would cut this kind of to a clean diagonal shape here. But what I'm going to do is kind of scoop it out. And what I mean by that is rather than cutting a, a clean straight line with vertical sections, I want to actually condense cut his hair here, which is a scary looking thing. Like if you don't know what you're doing, you can really mess up a haircut this way. But I'm pulling all of his hair from the top down and cutting it and I'm pulling the hair from the bottom up as a guide. And so essentially, the further the hair travels to be cut, the longer it's going to end up. And since everything at the top of the head is being pulled down further than everything beneath it to all be cut down at the same point, essentially a bowl haircut, um, we're going to have a, a shape that becomes more steeply graduated as we move up the head. And that's gonna give us a very um, exaggerated shape that's gonna be like scooped out, almost like a kind of a concave shape there. And it's gonna make the corners really bold. So now what I'm doing is I'm finding that longest hair at the top of my concave and I'm pulling it upward roughly 45 degrees. Then I'm connecting the entire top of the haircut to it. Now, by pulling this section up to use as a guide and cutting the other one, what it's going to do is cause shorter hairs on the top of the haircut, which is a little bit unconventional for a more traditional kind of haircut. So what this leaves us with is a lot of strength roughly at the parietal ridge, and then we're going to have layering above that, which is going to allow for a lot of movement just above that strength. As I flick the hair here, you can see almost immediately that hair just starts moving and flipping and curling really nicely. But beneath it, um, because the hair was pulled downward to be cut, it is graduated. And so essentially this shape that we're creating on the sides here is going to, at the top of the head, is going to be layered. Around the parietal ridge, it's going to begin to be graduated. And then at the very bottom where I put in that first guide, where I kind of elevated the hair a little bit as I cut it, that's going to be layered again. So we're having layered layers, graduation with kind of a conca concave shape, and then a little bit more layers again. Now, as I continue working through the back of the head, 
I'm going to keep doing this condensed cutting situation here. And essentially everything from the bottom of the head, I'm going to pull upward to cut. And anything from the top of the head, I'm gonna pull downward to cut. This is gonna give us graduation on top of layers, which means his hair down around the bottom is still gonna be free to move and bend and flow very nicely, while the hair up around the top corner of the head is going to pile up and build up some weight there to give us a stronger silhouette. It's going to kind of build up the shape of the haircut to emphasize the bone structure a little bit. And, you know, looking at this, it seems like, like I, I can't wait for somebody to tell me I don't know what I'm doing because I'm cutting everything at once here. But uh, this is a thing, man. It's It looks a little bit haphazard, and it kind of is. It is a little bit of sloppy technique, but the end result we're going for is kind of going to look a little bit sloppy. And it's like, you know, how do you draw... Uh, a truly chaotic, wavy, haphazard line is to, you got to wiggle your arm quite a bit, don't you? It's, it's really hard to precisely cut an imprecise looking haircut. And the thing is, you know, with Lauren's style, he doesn't like things to look perfectly tidy. He doesn't like things to look like, oh, I just got a fresh haircut. In fact, he, he doesn't really like to look like he got a haircut. And there's a big difference between having long, grizzly, messy hair because you haven't cut it in a long time and having long, grizzly, messy hair that is shapely. You can see now as I move the hair around, nothing can really fall out of place. It's all confined into that neat little box that I talked about. Now for day to day, Lauren probably doesn't blow dry his hair and he shouldn't have to, but I'm not gonna make him leave with wet hair. So what I'm gonna do is blow dry it a little bit here. And the name of the game with this blow dry as I'm working through this is I wanna move the hair a lot. The more I move it, the better. You'll see that for a good, I don't know, six minutes, I was just wiggling, scrunching, wiggling, scrunching, wiggling, scrunching. And essentially, I'm trying to emulate a day's worth of work and construction. Like he's going to be touching his hair. He's going to be moving his hair. And, the, and you, you might find at times, you know, like sometimes you live in your hair all day. And at the end of the day, it looks a little bit better than it did right when you styled it. See, one of the hardest things for me that I had to learn how to do is to style hair that doesn't look like it was styled. And if I pull out a brush and start pulling this thing around, it's going to look very structured and styled. But if I just wiggle it and move it and blow dry it and wiggle it and move it and blow dry it, it won't look styled, and that's kind of the goal here. Now in the front, I do wanna add a little bit of volume, so what I'm gonna do now that everything is pretty much dry is I'm gonna lift the hair where I want the volume, heat the root, and then cool the root. And where the hair cools, it stays. In fact, I think I put in a little too much volume by accident. So I'm gonna come back in here with the hair dryer and kind of tone that down. I'm just gonna like bend it and push it down while I'm heating it a little bit. And so, you know, you kind of wanna think of styling hair like ironing a shirt. You apply heat, you apply tension, and then it changes its shape. So now that the hair is dry, I can go through and start detailing the haircut. I'm not taking this edger too close to the edges. I mean, you could, you could do whatever you want, but you know, I'm not, I'm not here trying to show you how to do a haircut by the book that, that you would expect to see. Like now you do the clean lineup because that's what they teach you to do next. We don't want this to be clean and lined up. We want it to be kind of messy. So everything I'm touching with the uh, edger here is being elevated or cut below the hairline to leave everything softer. So in front of the ear there, I let everything hang down, but I didn't cut it like at the hairline like I would if I wanted a clean, clean lineup. And then over the ear, I was elevating everything as I cut it. And as we know with hair cutting, the higher you lift something as you cut it, the softer it falls. Now in the back here, after I shaved off that wolf hair underneath, I'm able to more clearly see how his hair is going to act. And what I'm doing here is just, you know, a mixture of slide cutting, point cutting, punch cutting, uh, just going in and, really just hand carving this to look like a cool hairline. This is something that I can't really give you an exact pointer on how to do. You just got to try it a lot and, and have a good eye for it really. Um, you kind of develop it with time. So for product, I'm taking a little tiny scrape of ADH dry. This is available at many, many salons across the US and a few in the UK and Ireland as well. But if you are not close to any of those, you can get it at ADHbrand.com. Now, because I want this hair to look like it wasn't styled, I'm going to apply the product mostly to the root, almost entirely and only to the root. Because, you know, when your hair gets dirty, the root gets dirty first. And that just makes it look a little bit more natural. And so what I'm kind of doing here is just pushing everything around and you know, I'm, I'm almost trying to make it bigger than I want it because it's going to fall down and, and settle itself down um, almost naturally. And here is my finished result. Here at the top of the haircut, you can see those layers that kind of keep the hair from being too long and sticking too far out and, and cause for a lot of movement. You can see the graduation here, uh, again, with that steep curve around the parietal ridge that's really building up a strong shape there and emphasizing the cheekbone. And then down at the bottom, we have a tiny bit of layering again that's just gonna allow for a lot of movement around the perimeter of the haircut. So this is a case where, you know, we didn't completely reinvent his style. He looks like him just a little bit more tailored and not so over the top clean and tidy that it like, you know, we don't want the haircut to just say, hey, I just got a haircut. We just want it to look good. Thanks for watching.